Welcome to video number 18 in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGahey, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Tourism is a powerful force that has the capacity to bring great benefits or great harm to a destination. So how do we tame the beast? How do we make tourism work for us? How do we shape it into a force that contributes to our community goals? The answer is complex. It involves lots of thought, reflection, and discussion about tourism's many potential forms and their triple bottom line impacts. To begin, a destination stakeholders must decide what it needs from tourism and what type of tourism industry it is willing to develop and promote to achieve that result. This criteria should serve as the foundation of a destination's tourism industry. If you recall video number two, Tourism Model, it begins with the foundation components. The first part of the foundation components includes the destination's vision of the tourism industry it hopes to create, which should be based on the community's values and the tourism philosophy that is developed in correlation with those values. Tourism is a business, but it is also a social science. So there are many ways to look at a topic and many labels that can be applied to specific components and subcomponents. Some tourism documents use the terms goals, strategies, principles, and missions when discussing the foundation of tourism within a destination. While those concepts are never far from the discussion of tourism values, philosophy, and vision, I think they come into play more during the second part of the foundation components, which is tourism policy, planning, and development. Creating or redeveloping tourism within a destination begins with the articulation of its community values. Therefore, all stakeholders must be encouraged to participate. This is especially true of local people and groups which have a long-term commitment to the community and whose values the community is based upon. They must ensure that tourism develops in a direction that is compatible with their way of life and their essential needs. So we begin by examining a community's values, which are based on its culture, religion, customs, and other traditional elements of society that give the community its character, livability, and sense of spirit. A community's values inform its philosophy of what the community wants tourism to be in its broadest sense and what it does not want tourism to be in its narrowest sense. The tourism philosophy takes into consideration what the community stands for and what it wants its tourism industry to represent and offer to the outside world. It combines community values with tourism potential to formulate expectations for proper tourism development. The long-term role of a destination's tourism philosophy is to serve as the conscience of the tourism industry as it grows and faces new challenges, opportunities, and alternatives for development. With a tourism philosophy in place, a destination can begin to visualize the type of tourism industry it wants to develop. The vision includes what is possible to be developed under optimal conditions. This includes all the components that make up a successful destination, which is, in essence, the products and facilities within the four operational sectors that are required to attract and serve specific types of tourists. The tourism vision will also include a careful consideration of the triple bottom line impacts that will result from the subsequent tourism activities within the destination. Next, let's look at some actual examples. Even though Hawaii was a highly popular destination in the mid-1980s, something was amiss. Its native culture was giving way to an international service mentality common to mass tourism rather than one based on the traditional Hawaiian value system that prevailed before the arrival of Captain Cook in 1778. In response to this cultural crisis, Dr. George Kanahele, a noted educator and kahuna, a respected elder, developed a program called Tourism Keeper of the Culture and began training hotel and resort managers and staff in the values and traditions that had made Hawaii such a unique place. He told them it was Hawaii's aloha spirit that made their culture so special, and they had the duty to integrate the essence of Hawaiian-ness into their work and their everyday lives because it was the right thing to do. By implementing his Hawaiian-ness program, Dr. Kanahele was resetting Hawaii's tourism industry 
based on its authentic indigenous values. The epicenter of the massive Indian Ocean tsunami struck just offshore from Indonesia's Aceh province at the northern tip of Sumatra on December 26, 2004. By the summer of 2006, the Bureau of Rehabilitation and Reconstruction was ready to consider tourism as part of its economic recovery strategy. I was contracted that summer as its first international tourism advisor. As I traveled to many places within the province, including the undeveloped island of Pulaway, also known as Sabang, it soon became evident that tourism could become a prominent part of Aceh's new economy, but it would have to be developed based strictly on local values. Aceh's values were much different from most of its Southeast Asian neighbors. Its values were based on Islamic religion, Muslim culture, Sharia law, and traditional island life. At the end of my assignment, I wrote the strategic framework for tourism development in Aceh province, which included the top six priorities that must be accomplished to develop Aceh's tourism industry. The number one priority was create a philosophy, vision, and policy for Aceh based on community values, religion, culture, and heritage through tourism meetings and public forums. In 2007, during the first of my two additional deployments in Aceh with the International Labor Organization, I wrote a framework for the tourism master plan for the island of Pulaway that included the following section entitled Tourism Philosophy. Pulaway's tourism philosophy is to develop a tourism industry that welcomes visitors from around the world to enjoy the island's fascinating tourism attributes and the genuine hospitality of its people. The primary purpose for developing tourism on Pulaway is to provide economic and social benefits for the local people. The tourism industry must aggressively protect Pulaway's natural resources both on land and in the sea and preserve its cultural resources and traditions. Tourism brings together people from many varied backgrounds, behaviors, and ways of life. Therefore, the tourism industry on Pulaway must be planned, developed, promoted, managed, and operated in a manner that respects the religious, social, and cultural values of the local people. Pulaway's tourism products and services must be developed and offered in a way that provides visitors the opportunity to experience the island's traditional lifestyle and its unique sense of place. Tourism will be an important part of an integrated economy on Pulaway, and it will promote, to the maximum extent possible, the utilization of local goods and services and the creation and success of small and family-owned businesses. Although Pulaway may someday become a major international destination, it must grow at a pace that enables the local people to grow along with it and become the managers, leaders, and entrepreneurs who will guarantee the fate of the tourism industry will remain under local control. Close public-private sector cooperation, public awareness, industry training, and access to microfinancing will guide and coordinate this growth. The same framework for the tourism master plan for the island of Pulaway also included a simple and direct vision statement. It read as follows, Pulaway will become a popular destination for Indonesian and international tourists who are interested in visiting an unspoilt destination, offering world-class diving and beaches, and a conservative Muslim society consisting of friendly, hospitable people who welcome tourists to their beautiful island of charming villages and scenic landscapes and share their traditional and timeless way of life. The tourism industry that faithfully realizes this vision will be sustainable and it will enhance the standard of living and the quality of life of the island's residents without imposing any unwanted changes on their environment or society. Creating a tourism philosophy and vision based on community values may sound like a waste of time and effort, but a firm foundation for tourism growth that is based on community-wide input helps ensure its widespread support and future success. Now I invite you to watch video number 19, Tourism Policy. Thank you.